Bradford to Strubby, Gliderfield and Alford. Now, I have no idea what this area is like, uh, but I guess we'll see how we go. Cruising altitude apparently is set to 7,000, that's a lie. We'll have that about 3,000 feet. Nice and low, VFR flying in these conditions. We've got scattered clouds, the wind going south at about 339, 22 knots. Well, that's the upper level wind. The ground level wind is only 8 knots and it's blowing at 1,3. Um, which is really confusing because look, the, the area is pointing south. That's the air direction the wind's coming from, I think. Unless I'm mistaken, maybe it's... Oh, I don't know. If I point that north and point this north, and then go to my other wind layer and point this north. So is that the direction the wind is blowing from, or the, wind's the, the direction the wind is blowing to? This is the part that really confuses me about this. If I look in the wind effect filters now, you see that's all blowing north. But I don't know if that's a live weather representation. Oh, you know what? I'm just going to fly with live weather. Screw it. Although, I need to change the time something a bit more. Like, fly ball for VFR. So we'll go with... Scattered clouds. I said live weather. We could do live weather, but... Mm, cloudy. Not brilliant. Let's be real. We'll, we'll go with scattered clouds. There we go. Live traffic is turned on. Player uh, interactions are turned on. So, yeah, without further ado, I'm just going to go for it. From parking ramp, I think it's number 33. At Leeds, although I'm not entirely sure. We'll go for a cold and dark startup and take it from there, basically. I'll put all the details I need into the FMS and make a flight plan, file it with the tower, get a departure clearance and a flight following and then from there it will be plain sailing I don't think there's much that we're really flying over today in terms of like natural beauty just English countryside although I'm not you know too acquainted with that part of the country anyway so it's going to be an experience for me that's for sure um, there is a there is looks like a, a forest here of some kind yeah, there's an area on my map that's highlighted in green which usually means national park or area of significance um, snake woodland and Macclesfield Forest, well, Macclesfield Forest is too far west. We're not going west, we're going east. Over Leeds, we could actually just follow the M1 all the way south, um, past Leeds, down towards Wakefield, Rotherham, Sheffield, Nottingham, and then once you get there, you can just go west. But that seems a bit impractical. I'm going to go pretty much as the crow flies in this Cessna. And, and we'll see how it goes, like I say. Here we go now, loading in. And as I say, visibility is 2-2, time is 7.25 in the morning, so lovely sunrise, wind 5 knots at 2.26. And that's the plane. For some reason it's on the motor... <sighs> I wanted it to be cold and dark startup, but for some reason it's put me on the runway again. And it looks like someone's coming to land here actually, or is that takeoff? I don't know. Well, we might as well while we're here. Transponder's on already. Do the flight planning, so... We've got, let's see, let me open up my notes again. We are at E G N M, which is Leeds Bradford. Whoops. G, whoops, H E G N for November. Mike. There we go, Leeds Bradford, and we are flying to. E G Y D, which should be Cranwell A B. Okay. If I hit enter on that, get rid of the cursor, change the CDI source to GPS. There we go. It's already done it, and it is saying it is pretty much the exact opposite direction I'm currently pointing. There's someone coming right towards me in a beach draft. Well, maybe it doesn't crash into me. That'd be quite the immersion killer. Not the best start to this stream, I've got to be honest. But hey, busy skies right at the minute, right? Leeds Bradford, a busier airport than I thought it would be. It's trying to take evasive maneuvers to get past me. He's sort of managed it. Anyway, let's. Um, I've already been cleared for takeoff, so I can just go. Okay. Even better, right then. Well, I need my mixture full. 
rich in. All my lights are set properly, I do believe. Yep, beacon landing taxi. Everything looks fine there. All my switches are fine, circuit breakers are fine. So I'm gonna get the engine going up to about 50% of full beams and I'll wait for this guy to go past actually. Don't wanna take off going into him. That'd be kind of embarrassing. Bring the egg back. And then the only thing to do now really, oh well, there's actually two things I'm gonna do. The, the second one, well the first one is to, to release the parking brake, the second one I can do is to get my head tracking going. So I did try this yesterday but it didn't really work out. But if I click start on this now, as I move my head in reality it should mimic it in the game. Which is pretty funky, uh, although it doesn't seem to have... Okay, so for some reason my roll is actually being reversed. Uh, okay, well, <laughs> let's leave that for the minute then. That needs some mapping needs to change. Look at my roll. Uh, hang on a second. Options. Center of startup. Yep, output. Uh, invert the roll. Let's try now. Yeah, that's better. So roll is fine. Okay, so that axis needs to change. If I'm looking right, so that's my... Oh, there's a lot wrong with this at the minute, isn't there? Dear me. Um, right. Let's just go in to the options and invert C, because that's the other one. Invert all of them, screw it. Right, how's that working? So, roll is fine. X, X axis needs to change. Leaning in works now, at least. If I go up, that works, yep. Uh, what was the other one I needed to test? Oh yeah, side to side. So that's my X. My Y. Y is fine, X needs changing. Okay, so as I'm looking up and down, that needs changing. That's my pitch, I believe. So, let's go in. Stop, options, pitch, do not invert. Let's try now. Yep, that's working good now. So it's just the x-axis I need to stop and remap. X-axis off of invert, start. Yep, that's working properly now. And up, down, left, right, roll, left, roll, right. X, good. Y, moving backwards and forwards like that. There we go. And Z, moving up and down. So there we go. Fully mapped head movement. Let's go for this, shall we? Uh, without further ado, release the parking brake. It feels weird doing this with my head. And off we go. Whoa. Okay, full power. Let's go. Flaps. Were oh, flaps down already? Yeah, they were. Okay, that's fine. Good. Alrighty then. So, just keep the plane on the centre line. This is very sensitive. I need to remap all my head tracker movement because this is very sensitive at the minute and it's a little bit too sensitive actually in my opinion 60 knots, let's rotate and we're away I'm going to climb a bit steeper than I normally would, about 7,500 7 7, feet per minute ish uh, just trim out here sensitive. I'll have another look at that later. Um, let's begin to pitch. So, pitch, roll. Getting all my terms messed up to date. It's been a long day. So, rolling over. Flight time's being cut down in half, as it should be. And I basically need to just fly parallel to the runway that I just took off on, and that's going in the right direction, broadly speaking. So, level out. There we are. 
I don't know if the wind's on my side today or not. Uh, probably isn't, because usually the wind's blowing north, that's just a jet stream. And I'm, of course, heading south, so... Not the best, but oh well. trimmed out about right now. Uh, no, nope, a little bit too low. That should fix it. There we go, okay. Look at the moon. Oh, gorgeous. It did look just like that this morning actually. I remember waking up at about four o'clock in the morning and seeing it really low on the horizon. It was lovely. Perfect crescent moon. One of the other cool things about this game is that it's got all the real world weather and real world times which and with the real world time comes the real world moon phase and the real world sunrise and sunset times according to your location on the planet all of that's done automatically which is pretty nifty so yeah not to say now really besides letting the plane just do its climb i can put the flaps up actually let's do that now flaps up to normal. This is going to dip because the angle of attack's changed. Let's just re trim. There we go, that looks fine. A bit higher, come on. Come on. There we go. Trim it out. Oh. There. That looks good to me. Right. So as I say, we're going to just try and follow this pink line as best we can. As we are flying into a headwind, uh, this may be quite a slow flight, although I guess we'll wait and see. So when I leave the airspace of Leeds Tower, I should get a call to change frequency. Oh, literally as I say that, it happens. change and I don't know what the new frequency is. We'll find out in a minute. Looks like we've got Leeds approach. I'm just going to level off the plane here at 3000. Throttle back to about... Whoa. Okay. Let's do this by hand. First of all we need to do the fuel flow. So let's pull the mixture back a bit. Well that's made a big difference already hasn't it? Right about there looks optimal. Nose down, throttle back, bit, there we go, and now I just need to do the trim, so pushing that nose right in, whoops, is that going to try and dip naturally or will it, will it level out on zero, let's find out. Maybe we aren't, we aren't flying into such a bad headwind actually. Ground speed is 108 knots, we're flying at about 100 airspeed. Although that is only an indicated value, so... Can't be sure if, if it's totally accurate. It says I've got two viewers at the moment, so hello to two viewers. Whoever they may be. Hopefully the um, microphone levels are better today than they were yesterday. sunrise over there as well it looks like the sun coming through that cloud ever so slightly and you can see now the plane because of the direction the propeller spinning there is some torque and the plane will naturally want to bank one way or the other today it looks like it wants to go left so I'll just make sure it's been kept straight I could put it on autopilot but where's the fun in that let's be honest <laughs> I'm also going to put my indicators on dimmed because that is quite bright Looks like now we're flying over a river of some kind. What town is this beneath me, I wonder? Power of maps will probably tell me. I 
think it's Doncaster. Um, what was it? Maybe not. Hmm. It could actually be Leeds. Because I think the airport, yeah, it probably is actually just Leeds, town of Leeds. As we go through this big cloud here, it looks like, whoa. I'm still getting altitude, that shouldn't be happening. Right, trim, come on. Let's do that frequency change like I was told to. So, one. Three, four, decimal, five, eight, zero. Let's do some twisting of these dials. There we go. And we'll get a flight following. Leads approach Cessna Gulf. Kilo India Foxtrot. Foxtrot is type Cessna Skyhawk, four miles west of Echo Gulf. Gulf Foxtrot. Request flight following. Still give you a chance to contact now. Kilo India Foxtrot Foxtrot leads approach. Squawk 2372. 2372. Cessna India Foxtrot Foxtrot radar contact 4 miles southwest of Echo Gulf Gulf Foxtrot 3600 feet. Altimeter 29 or decimal 9 or 2. This all sounds good to me. Copy Cessna India Foxtrot Foxtrot. Altimeter settings are all correct, which is good. Now that sun is peeking through these clouds now, looking gorgeous. Computer's only taking 29 minutes now, so we are shaving a lot of time off of this flight. I think because for a while we went flying directly as the crow flies, there may well be a crosswind that's pushing me slightly off course here. Um, so I'm going to follow this heading and see how it goes. Am I? <laughs> Big one over there. That might be Doncaster, actually. Because they've got a similarly sized airfield to Leeds with the Pappy system and everything. At least I think that's the case. May well be wrong. Probably am knowing me. <laughs> but yeah, very pretty looking out that window. Excellent visuals. Even on a, on a NVIDIA 1070, this is quite an old graphics card now. And when it came out, it wasn't even top of the range, but this is still powering along on about 35 FPS, I'd say. When you go near the bigger airports, like taking off from Leeds just then, I was probably at about 25. But it doesn't really ever go below 20, even on a card like this, which is, you know, I'm happy with that. Although, that being said, I do think the game is probably more dependent on the CPU than it is on the GPU. Got some uh, railway lines, looks like, going through the middle of this town here. Two of them. And that's a very funny shaped building. Motorway here, looks like. No traffic on it. It's a shame. Usually there is some AI traffic, but it looks like today that's not the case. As we go through another big cloud here. We still. Why are we still going back? I just can't get the plane to trim out properly, for goodness sake. Flying through these clouds is always really disorienting. Like you can lose your bearings very easily. I am entirely dependent now on these six instruments here. that the GPS wants us to follow, so it would seem. Continuing to head towards Hull, approximately, that's about where we're going, although slightly to the south of Hull, actually. Okay. Two, six, two, two, five. There we go. 
just approach. Don't know whose approach it is or what approach. Kilo India Fox Trot Fox Trot 3,800 feet. Cessna Golf, Kilo India Fox Trot Fox Trot approach continue as planned. Altimeter 2 9 or decimal 9 or 2. There was more to talk about. Regrettably, I know nothing about this part of the country, so <laughs> I don't. <laughs> but hey ho, cruising along here nearly at 4,000 feet now. That's just from the plane rising on its own, which I didn't want it to do, but it seems to just have a knack for look, it's picking up altitude again. Even with all the trim I've given it, it just does not want to stay at its uh, level. And that's really bugging me now. Only five minutes to go, and still ticking down more than one second per second. So, although occasionally, it's I think we're already hitting gusts of wind, which is why the time is now going up, even though I'm following that line perfectly. Whoa, that was a mistake. <laughs> Either that, or I'm just not following the line very well. It may well be a, be a mix of both. I tell you what, I'm, I'm going to put the, the autopilot on just because I'm fed up with the plane drifting now. Um, so autopilot on, nav mode on, altitude hold on 3700. There we go, now I can just let it coast. So I'm going to go and get myself some water, I think. I'll be right back. Oh, well, here we are again, back in the hot seat. I'm just going to take my phone out of that stand since it wasn't really being used. <sighs> What's the flight computer saying? 22 minutes. Okay. So this is going to end up actually being quite a short flight. I was expecting longer, um, but it seems to be making good speed and good progress. 150 knots. Not bad at all, eh? Looks like some more pits down there, some more quarries. As we head on over towards the airport we're going to, which I forgot the name of it already, it's Cranwell. Cranwell AB, so let's have a look at the VFR map, work out where we are. Shall we? That looks like the River Humber. So we've probably already flown over it, goodness me, that means we've gone really far. Yeah, we're heading more down towards here, aren't we? So we're probably going to end up flying over Nottingham. Uh, another big airport coming up on our right. EGNE. -E. What would that be? EGNE. -E. Let's Google it. EGNE -E. would be Retford. I've never heard of it. <laughs> Retford Ganston. Well, presumably it's somewhere around Lincoln. Yeah, okay, so it's, probably, it's it's somewhere, it's like between Doncaster and Lincoln. So Doncaster's probably up here, Retford, and then Lincoln's probably somewhere more down here. Everybody's rivers. I think it's probably actually more like over the river. It's probably, this airport is actually very close to Lincoln, I think. So we may as well just call it Lincoln Airport. <laughs> Haven't been to Lincoln before. That'll be a welcome addition to the 
travel itinerary, the virtual travel itinerary. Twenty minutes to go, and we're ticking. I think that's slightly over one second per second, so probably more like twenty-five. Realistically speaking, although who knows, could be longer, could be shorter. Depends what the wind's doing. This is an interesting looking place, isn't it? Where are we now? See, I should have really been keeping a track of where we were as soon as we took off, but I wasn't. So as a result, I have now completely lost my bearings. Uh, EGCN, what is that? Is that like Doncaster? EGCN is, yeah, Doncaster. So I was actually really wildly wrong about my estimate about where Doncaster was. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, but it looks like I'm now flying pretty close to it, at least. stations down here. Very industrial part of the country. The north, although as we come further and further south it goes from being industrial to green pastures as far as you can see. That's a really interestingly shaped lake isn't it? It is. So the stadium is the keep moat stadium apparently and this reservoir here that's in the shape of a circle is called, I don't know if it has a name, it does it's on the map. But anyway, coming further down, this road that goes right through the middle, uh, well actually that, that's a, a railway line. The road crossing it here is the A61, I think. And then right next to it, over on my right, which you can't quite see at the minute. Well actually that might be it right there. Yeah, I think that's it. So that would be the M18. Is it? Oh, this is so confusing. <laughs> Yeah, this is the this is the motorway, the M18, which goes up towards um, the next biggest town, which is probably Thorn, Fish Lake, or Cliff Howden. But we're not going to follow that one. We are going to follow the other motorway, which is the A, or the A1M. Still following that goodness, gosh darn road. As we come now into the town of. Rossington and New Rossington. This is New Rossington with these interesting spiral structures uh, being built. So we're flying parallel to them, so we'll follow this road down. Next big town, really, to it, I can expect to come across is Bawtree, apparently. Bawtree. As we close in on 17 minutes to go. Yeah, I think we're definitely uh, a bit longer than this is anticipating. There's Doncaster to the Doncaster airfield. If this was a real flight, I'd 100% have to get clearance to fly over here. But, as it's not, I don't. So, <laughs> I can do it how I want. Thank you very much. I could actually probably shoot the tower. The question, and then space transition. Tower says the goal. Kilo India Foxtrot Foxtrot is type Cessna Skyhawk 3 miles southwest of Echo Gulf Charlie November. Requesting transition. Cessna Gulf. Kilo India Foxtrot. Foxtrot transition approved. Report clear of tower airspace. Okay. So that's the correct way to, te to do it, technically. Although I don't know where well, the boundary between my airspace and class D airspace ends. We are, yeah, like I say, flying right over the skies. Like if you're going for a landing approach here, we are flying basically right in the middle of your um, glide slope, which I'm not sure they'll be very keen of, but looks like a quiet airport right now, so I'm sure they won't mind. Let me 
look at the map for Cranwell. Cranwell. AB, I think it's an airbase. If it has Cranwell, if it has AB after it, it's usually an airbase. So, Cran, I'm going to say Cranwell. Village? Sleaford. Looks like it isn't about the right place, so you can't see an airport. Oh no, I can see an airport. This is it. Okay, that looks pretty easy to land at. It's marked here as RAF College Tranmore, yeah, so it's an RAF base. Probably shouldn't be landing there. Um, but this is a flight sim, not a real thing, so... I'll just pretend it isn't an RAF base. <laughs> Probably should have checked that before I put it into my flight computer, never mind. Oh. Big cloud coming up, it looks like. How does it look from the outside? That's a good picture, isn't it, right there? Okay, so no, I wasn't. I wasn't seeing the comments. They should be showing apparently, but that's not happening. Uh, if I look in my HUD layout comments, yeah, it should be showing them up, but it isn't. That's a bit of a pain. But I've got them on my on my phone now, so I can see what you're writing now. Thank goodness. Um, this actually isn't a sunset. This is a sunrise this time, and we're flying from Leeds where we were yesterday to an RAF base which I didn't really actually realise that it was an RAF base and yes I can see your comments now um, they were just a bit delayed for whatever reason well not, well, not delayed but you know um, they should be showing up on my stream but they're not so I'm having to look at my phone instead which is a bit of a ball lake but never mind um, they should be dimmed flying through a cloud isn't exactly the most interesting thing to look at I concede but a good picture. Hopefully we will be descending soon, getting ready for landing at 7.56am this time. It will make sense eventually, yeah, I suppose so. We'll get there. 
these things are never meant to be simple, are they? You'd like to think they would be, but... Not for me. Never for me. <laughs> 11 minutes to go on the flight computer, although I think this is reading... Like, it's, it's being too generous to me. Even though now we're shaving off more than one second per second. Um, ground speed and the airspeed seem to be matching up pretty much, which usually isn't a good indication. You'd want your airspeed to be lower than your ground speed. This this would suggest we're flying into a bit of a headwind here, so... Maybe the flight computer hasn't taken that into account. Lovely countryside here though, goodness me. I'm going to have to take a bush plane at some point and go and just do landings in these fields. <laughs> Ripe for the picking, aren't they? Although this is far from a bush plane, this is just a little light aircraft. Is this the platform you'll go with to stream? Um, well, this is the thing, I don't really plan on sh like making streaming a big deal. Like, I don't do it for anybody else to do it, just because like if, there, if there's someone who wants to watch it, then sure, I'll do it. Um, but I don't envision myself going big on the internet or anything like that, so probably I'll just stick with whatever works, which at the moment is this. Like, if, if the sound is okay, then I'll stick with it, because yesterday the sound was horrible and I can't seem to find a troubleshooting like guide for it. Apparently it's just a problem that's universal to this particular headset. Um, so I think I'll stick with this. It's a shame really, because I, I can have overlays, um, but I'm yet to figure out exactly how they work. And the other thing that's good about this system is that you might not be able to see it at home on your screen, but I have a um, ultra-wide monitor. It's it's um, 21 by 9 aspect ratio. And when I'm streaming using this software, it does the live stream in that like, in the correct aspect ratio. So if you've got an ultra-wide screen at home, like if you've got a modern one of the more modern iPhones with the bezel, and you watch it, um, I'll show you actually. If you watch it like tilted over like that, you can see it takes up the entire screen rather than um, having a black bar at the top and bottom, which is what you'll get if you're watching on a, on a regular monitor. But for me, this works quite nicely, so I'll stick with it. For now. Coming through another cloud, but it needs to descend at some point because these clouds are just obscuring all the great views. Um, Let's go for it. We'll do we'll do an automated descent. So with the autopilot, I can actually tell it to descend at a certain rate. I'll turn on vertical speed mode. Actually, it won't. I'll, I'll turn it off for a second, and I'll just select 2,500 as an altitude we're aiming for. Turn on vertical speed, and we'll descend at 300 per minute. And now, here we go. The plane should try and hold 300 per minute. I'll drop the throttle a bit as well because we're going to overspeed that voice just down to about 20,000, 21,000 RPM, there we go, that looks good. And now the autopilot will hold that perfectly because it's much better than I am. Flight computer doesn't like it though, look at that. It's getting stuck on these numbers, it's like, uh, expect a time of E, whatever E is. I would say arrival, but it's not ETA. Anyway. I need to report clear of Doncaster airspace now, so we'll do that. Tower Completely forgot about this. Too quite honest with you. Clear up the tower airspace. Cessna India Foxtrot Foxtrot contact leaving approach on one two three decimal three. One two three decimal three. Three zero zero. There we go. Got to, forgot to tell them that we're going away. India, Fox trot, Fox trot. Yes, I copied. Sorry, sorry. Acknowledge. Going to one, two, three decimal three Cessna in the Fox trot, Fox trot. There we go. And now I can flick frequencies and contact Leeming. Leeming approach Cessna Cloud. Kilo in the Wherever Leeming is. No idea. Feet. Not familiar with the geography around here either. Cessna Golf. If we get further south, I'll have a better idea, hopefully. That sounds fine to me. Okay. Yes, we're also closing in now, right? Um, nope. Not on my top ten list here. Cran well, that's where we're going, Cranwell. So, what 
what their food. Oh, they do have two. They have two frequencies. That's good. All right, we'll tune their tower. For, well, actually, no, we'll tune their eighties first. So, 126 decimal three two five. Lot of manual mouse scrolling for this. <laughs> on the newer planes, you can just. It's like a touch screen, you just tap the numbers and it goes in really quickly, but on this one it's old. So that should be the ATIS if I flicked to COM2. Cranwell Airport, information India 08000. 1272 at 8. Visibility 6. Sky condition 900 feet scattered 4000. Ooh, low clouds, okay. Scattered. Temperature 15. 2.13. So this is what I don't like about the aviation world. They give the wind direction as of direction of where it's coming from, not where it's blowing to. So wind 272, you'd think that means, oh, okay, so the wind's blowing at um, 270, or 272 rather, so it's blowing west. Wrong. It's actually blowing east. It's coming from the west. Which makes no sense because, oh, I don't know why you would just give it in the direction it's going from, or going to rather. Be much so much easier, but it is what it is, I suppose. Four minutes to go and 8.5 nautical miles, so let's tune their tower now. All the ATIS information seem to find to me 125050. There we go, and we'll flick over to COM 1 and 2, and we need to get a full stop landing, so let's get clearance for that. Kilo India Foxtrot Foxtrot is 8 miles northwest with Juliet to land. Technicolf, Kilo India Foxtrot Foxtrot Cranwell Tower. Fly left downwind runway 26. Altimeter 29 or decimal 9 or 2 wind 272 at 8. Okay, that sounds fine. Make left traffic runway Your new book, what are you reading? Foxtrot, Foxtrot. I'm currently in the middle of um, a self help book of all things, actually. Although it's really, really good. I'm enjoying it. It's more than just a self-help book, it's almost like a statement on philosophy and culture, all those kinds of things bundled into one. So it's a really, really good read, but quite heavy. <laughs> anyway, where is the airport? It should be right in front of me. And it's too misty to see, so I'm going to have to descend a bit more. Let's descend to 1,000 feet. So let's turn vertical speed back on. Drop at 500. There we go. Whoa, plane didn't like that. <laughs> Take cool to pilot a little, a minute or two just to figure it out. The ATIS was saying um, clouds at 900 feet, so it might be a tricky one to, to pick up the runway by eye. Although apparently it's quite long. I think that's it there actually. Yeah, that probably is it. So shouldn't be too difficult, but you know, digging my own grave there, aren't I? <laughs> down now through 2000. I'll kill the autopilot in a second and actually we should probably take a couple of revs out of this engine because it's going a bit too quickly. I'll bring it down to about, there we go, 19,000 RPM. Yeah, that's the wrong way there, isn't it? Or is it? No, no, that's a greenhouse, so I was wrong actually. It's this then, isn't it? That's that's one way lights. That has to be it. So, runway 26, left traffic. I need to fly to the left of the runway and then do a left traffic pattern, which I still get confused which one's which. Like, do you fly left of the runway as you're going towards it, which would be flying left of runway the opposite of 26 on the compass, which is 08. Or do you fly left of runway 26, which would be the, to the right of runway 28, uh, to, of 08? <laughs> See, the numbers get confusing, I get confused. It's a really, really, really awkward one. I'm sure that like, if you're a professional pilot, you've done it a million times, you know, but this is all still new to me, so. <laughs> anyway, we'll 
we'll fly to the, the left of the runway as we see it here and then hopefully it will, it will just click into place and work out what I'm doing got about a minute left of this descent and then actually I will take control of the plane really is some low cloud here we weren't lying about that still very misty even at one and a half thousand feet here lovely view though Gorgeous. Okay, let's disengage the autopilot. There we go. Plane's going to immediately start fighting me, but we're going to roll over. And bring us around to heading 08 on that compass wheel. Underneath my attitude indicator, which is just above the virtual representation of the yoke on my screen. There we go, that's 09. Level off about there. Here we go. Okay. And let's just bring the throttle down even more. Mixture back to rich. Throttle right back. I need to put flaps up in a second, so. Get the plane into the flap deploy range. Speed. There's the clearance. Wind sounds fine to me. I need to accept that clearance. Uh, there we go. I'll go away. Looks like I'm in range for flaps, so we're going to deploy flaps one. Keep that airspeed nice and low. We're still dropping altitude, so I need to trim again. Maybe give it a little bit more throttle, because we did lose a lot of speed just then. Let's go flaps two. And we'll begin to roll over to the right. Runway should be just over here somewhere. We were flying at 08, so now we need to be flying at 17 on the compass, which is there. Whoa, diving a bit. There's the runway. We are very low here, aren't we? My goodness. Okay. Easy does it. Pick my turn in just a second. Let's go. Probably a bit too premature, actually. Zone. Pappy lights you can see on the right of the one where they're saying I'm far too low, but it doesn't really matter because I'm not an airliner. If I was flying an RAF jet, then yeah, this would be a problem right now, but in a Cessna, not a major deal. Let's just sit up in the seat, peep over that the nose. That sound is the altimeter, the radio altimeter saying I'm too low. And it can sense the terrain. Oh, we're stalling. Throttle. Oh, the paint doesn't like this one bit, is it? Oop. That's my mistake. Seems like we've got enough speed now, though, so that's positive. It's still descending just fine. Let's get over that threshold. Okay, throttle back. Throttle cut. And bring it in slowly but surely. There we go. Bit of a bounce there, but I'll take it nonetheless. I've already got to go all the way over there. Are you kidding me? Looks like it. <laughs> um, okay. Can I not just do a turn? Right, it's going to bring me all the way back around. I'm just going to turn around and come back the other way. Just give it some better. There we go. Cessna India Foxtrot, Foxtrot, contact ground on 121.775. Okay. 
Going to 121 decimal 77, find Cessna India Foxtrot Foxtrot. 121775. Which, for some reason, it isn't liking. Oh, that's because I'm on the other channel. Here we go. Requesting taxi to parking. Cranwell Ground Sesame Dolph. Kilo India Foxtrot Foxtron. Request taxi to parking. Sesame Dolph. Kilo India Foxtrot Foxtron. Taxi to General Aviation Parking by a taxiway cross runway 8 Alpha cross runway 1 Alpha Echo Delta. Okay, that sounds good to me. Going a bit too fast here. General Aviation parking by a taxiway cross runway 8 Alpha cross runway 1 Alpha Echo Delta Cessna India Foxtrot Foxtrot. And now it's just a long taxi. <laughs> About a mile. But whatever. It's not so bad, is it? If I miss any chats, let's see. Sounds fine. Yeah. I, 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 is that in reference to the book or the landing? I don't know. <laughs> the one thing it doesn't do properly, the AI that builds these airports, is it's looked at the building over here that's probably a hangar and thought, yep, that should be a, a, an office block. Why? I don't know. <laughs> but at least it's got the runways like correctly lit and the taxiways are lit properly and the signs are all done properly, so it's not that much right. AI vehicles like this can be a right pain though. They just sit in the middle of runways and get confused. So far from a perfect product this game, but I'd say it's worth the money. Cheers. Just do a seat. <laughs> so, in reality, you wouldn't be allowed to taxi above 20 knots, but right now I'm not divvying about. <laughs> I just want to park up and get this over and done with. Ooh. Half a mile to go. It really is a distance, yeah. <laughs> Quite a long way to go. Didn't realise quite how big this airfield was when I first got here. My mistake. I should have gone to the end of the runway like it was telling me to, but I didn't realise. I thought the, the general aviation parking was all over that way. Anyways, can I see my tug yet? Yeah, there's my man. What else is over here? Looks like... Lots of different planes, actually. Yeah. Some of those will be players, and some of them will be um, just like stuff that the AI has put in there to make it look a bit more decorated. But I will leave my plane in this spot for the night, and then anyone who comes by will see it and know that it's me. They're making me go all the way around, aren't they? Oh, for goodness sake, screw that. I'm sorry, I'm not diffing about. 
I could follow those line, the arrows and do the lines probably if I wanted to, but again, it's it's first evening. I want to go and watch more of the week. <laughs> Here he is, right. Throttle back. And break. Bit more to the right, he's saying. There we go. And stop. Perfecto. Okay. Parking brake on. Avionics can come off. Battery can come off. And engine can come off. And there we go. So that's done. I uh, hope you enjoyed watching. And I might do this again tomorrow. I'm not sure. But I need to finish off this UK Grand Tour. So now we're in Lincoln sort of way. I'll probably head back down now through Norfolk and Norwich. Um come back through London maybe and then go back down to Leon Seven. So a couple more flights to do. But we're nearly there. So with that being said, thanks again and 